Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Um, today, we are going to go on an adventure together that will take all of us, I hope, to a new paradigm on how flying wings are designed. And you're going to be the first to find out. Uh, this is a discovery that I made recently that involves a little geometry problem and how we design flying wings that apparently has been hiding in plain sight for decades. It's been right there in front of every designer and gone, as far as I know, unrecognized. Uh, I discovered it recently while I was doing a bunch of testing with my models. And when I first realized what it was, I said, holy cow, that is so simple. It couldn't be that simple. And I went back and did the math, did out more test flying, went through everything and went, it really is that simple. Um, it, the, how it came about, why it exists, uh, I can speculate on that, but the important thing is, is I have the solution. And I'm gonna share that solution with all of you so that we can go forward designing flying wings in a better way. This is a very fundamental thing that you're gonna learn in this video. It's as fundamental as putting the center of gravity in front of the center of pressure. If you don't do that, wings not flyable. And this little problem, uh, has been hiding in such a way as that sometimes it's been a problem, sometimes it hasn't. It's actually caused crashes, uh, and nobody has seen it, as far as I know. Um, and I hope uh, that people grab onto this, and it really does uh, set a new standard for how to design a flying wing so we can all do it and create designs that are safer and fly better. So bear with me. It's going to be a long video, a lot of components in it. It's a complex topic. Uh, I'm going to take you through it step by step, and uh, if you're watching the long version on YouTube, maybe you want to go get a drink and a snack, because we're going to be here for a while. Uh, so, bear with me and learn something new. Here we go. Welcome back. So there, in the quick little intro, you saw that this topic is going to be about stalls and spins. Uh, spins have been a problem for flying wings as long as there's been flying wings. And on flying wings, they are particularly bad. Uh, you can get into a really flat spin, hard to get out of, takes lots of altitude to recover, and the aircraft is rotating very fast. Uh, without the tail back there to provide some damping, uh, it, it looks like a saucer or plate just spinning around. And uh, when you have it happen on a model, it's a little spooky. And if you've got enough altitude, you recover. On a full size, I can't imagine how scary it might be. Uh, my original wing was uh, lost to a stall spin accident. And this has been a topic that I've been working on ever since then, on how can we actually build a flying wing that has all of the original performance, great handling, but is absolutely spin proof. And I don't mean by putting the CG way forward where it's so heavily damped that you can't maneuver or limiting the control throws so that you don't have uh, sufficient control power to uh, do a full set of maneuvers. I'm talking about an aircraft that flies normally, has normal control throws, yet no matter what you do, it won't spin. Uh, that has been a holy grail for a lot of aircraft designs. And these days, most conventional configurations are highly resistant to spinning. Now, that's not to say that you can't push the CG way aft, get it way behind its aft limit. Anything will spin then. I'm talking about for when the CG is within the normal range. Stall spins have been uh, of a deadly nature for decades with flying wings. Uh, the Horton brothers lost one of their gliders to it. You can see a picture up here somewhere. I believe it's probably at least partially due to this phenomena. Uh, the Northrop uh, flying wing, the jet version that was lost uh, at uh, Muroc uh, Dry Lake, which is now Edwards, because he was flying the flying wing when it crashed, so they named the base after him. Um, the right wing panel out by the Elevon was found four miles away from the main crash site. Uh, it snapped off when they were trying to uh, recover from what it was believed to be a very flat spin. They exceeded the four and a half G design limit on the wing and tore the outer panels off. Uh, very bad crash. They were actually out doing test flying 
uh, with uh, aft CG locations. So they were susceptible to spinning at that point. And when they switched from propeller version to jet version, uh, they accidentally uh, made the problem worse and they probably didn't even know about it. Uh, so uh, it is a real problem that has plagued designers for a long time. People have tried to deal with it in a bunch of different ways. Uh, they've used uh, wing fences and Vortilons and all uh, winglets, all different kinds of solutions. Some help, some help a little, some seem to work, some don't work at all. Uh, the SB-13 sailplane, another picture of it. Uh, that hangs in a museum today because its handling qualities were so poor. Uh, and when I look at that design, knowing what I know now, I understand why and uh, how they could redesign that to make that better. There's a, a new Horton-esque type design that's out. I think again, another picture up here. Um, it has uh, rather large winglets on it and it's got a wing fence that runs right across the elevons because they're trying to control uh, part of the problem and prevent uh, stalls and spins using that wing fence. Uh, I don't believe that they have the problem fully covered at this point, and they'll continue to have challenges with that design. Uh, but if we do our designs differently, we can eliminate all of those devices uh, because most of those devices to control the situation actually uh, impact negatively on performance and this solution will have no negative impact on performance and, and it's a guaranteed solution i'll give you the math and i'll give you the numbers behind it and if a designer meets the numbers uh, that i'm putting out uh, the design should be spin proof uh, and, and it's going to be a very interesting phenomena you'll be surprised uh, when you see uh, what's going on it's just going to be so blindingly simple you'll be resistant to actually believing it at first, but it's really true. So we're gonna to have to cover some basic topics in order to get into this, some basics of aerodynamics so that we understand how stalls occur uh, and how they are special regarding uh, flying wings, especially swept flying wings, and especially so for tapered swept flying wings. The problem becomes even worse. Uh, so we're gonna to have to just walk our way through all the basics uh, so that I can get you to that final conclusion that says, here's how you solve the problem. So let's start by talking about um, how uh, a wing stalls and what is special about flying wings relative to stall. And uh, let me reposition here and I'm gonna get the uh, whiteboard up and we'll have a little chalk talk. And, and yes, I know there's no chalk involved. Uh, but saying marker talk or felt talk just doesn't have the same impact as chalk talk. Uh, so whiteboard, I, I'll get reset here and, and you'll come back.